some of the pushback I get in my comments under my videos is this gaslighting that I am losing my mind and that all of my um, opinions and information and all of this stuff I talk about when it comes to homophobia, transphobia, queerphobia in the anti-fandom space, it's all a figment of my imagination and that I don't know what I'm talking about. It's a very common trend when I call people out for being bad actors in the space and either contributing to the homophobia or being outright homophobic. It kind of runs the, the gamut there between those two things. But the end result is the same. So for me, as I've said before, I don't care what the intention is. At a certain point, the intention doesn't matter because you're causing harm and you know you're causing harm, even if your intention is not to cause harm. So it doesn't really matter. So I decided that nuance doesn't really work for a lot of you guys. Um, having deeper conversations doesn't work. So I wanted to be very specific about how um, I could determine if a channel or a person is putting out too much anti-gay content. I mean, one video is too much for me, but, but we're talking about like massive amounts of it, making up a big chunk of the content that that channel produces. So I wanted to start out with a channel that we talk about quite often, one that I'm familiar with, and I'm going to do this to more channels as well. And that is uh, Young Rippa here, Eric July. So Eric July, at the beginning of this year, said he was going to focus on his, his company, the Rippaverse. He was going to stop getting into like this uh, online culture war stuff. And he was really going to focus on being a businessman because he's a business owner first and a YouTuber second. So you would think that that would be the majority of the content he puts out would be about his business and about his company and about his brand. However, I have done this test where I've gone, you know what, I'm going to look at 30 days worth of videos on YouTube, exactly 30 days worth of videos. Count how many videos the, the person has made in this, you know, we're talking about Eric July here. So how many videos Eric July has made in roughly 30 days and what percentage of those videos are exclusively about um, anti-gay, anti-trans, anti-queer stuff. Just basically that, that whole section, queer space, right? How, what percentage of his videos of his output makes up that type of content. I'm gonna tell you how many videos he's made in as of recording this, this video here. And before I give my uh, the percentage, I want you to guess in the comments. So in 30 days, Air July has made roughly 62 videos or uploaded roughly 62 videos. This includes full on videos and clips. I'm not including live streams, um, these are just videos. So he's uploaded 62 videos in the last 30 days. How many of those videos do you think fall under the criteria of anti-queer content being the subject matter of the video? How many of them? Give you a second. 24 of those 62 videos, the topic of the video was either specifically gay, trans, anti-queer, diversity, like that umbrella, 24 of 62 videos. So I did a little quick math here. That's a little bit over 40%. So over 40% of his video output in the last 30 days have been anti-gay, anti-queer content. I think that's a pretty high amount. That's a that's a pretty big amount. We're not talking about one or once or twice here or there. We're talking about coming up on half of the percentage of content he puts out is exclusively made as anti-queer content, be it pre-recorded videos or clips. When you upload them as a separate video, the reach is the same. It does like YouTube doesn't uh, differentiate between a clip or a snippet or a, a news article or whatever it is you're doing. It's just a video that you've uploaded. 24 of the 62 have had that. And, and that's not even counting the other videos where maybe he discussed gay people in the videos. I had to go through and watch some of these to make sure that I was getting this, this number right. Um, he may have discussed like anti-gay stuff in other videos where the title wasn't about anything anti-gay, but I didn't include those. It's kind of weird. So he said at the beginning of the year, as a business person, he was going to focus on his company and his brand. How many videos do you think in the last 30 days on his channel actually focused on Ripaverse exclusively? Same criteria as the, as the anti-gay stuff. How many? Six, six out of 62 videos actually focused exclusively on Ripaverse. That means like talking to a person that writes for him, draws for him, colors for him, 
uh, something related to promotion. Only six of them. That's less than 10% of the videos in the last uh, 30 days. So what does that mean? Why, why is someone who is, according to a lot of you fans of his, someone who is not homophobic, who's not transphobic, who's not queerphobic, why is it that over 40% of their content is about that, but less than 10% of their content, in contrast, is about their business? You're going to have to explain that one to me because I don't understand that one. I don't understand that one. And then a lot of these videos include as. Let's let's dive into as for just a moment. So as is a professional clown. He's a he, he's performative, right? Because he freaked out about pronouns in Starfield. He freaked out when he went into a grocery store and saw some plastic rainbow flags hanging on a railing somewhere in the grocery store. But he has no problem spending endless amounts of time on streams with Eric talking about anti-gay stuff. So what, what's real? Is it the, the triggering of him being upset about queer people or is it more about performing for an audience and being a clown for everybody while he sits on stream and acts like these are all serious topics? And in one of the videos I watched, he tried to downplay his homophobia. Well, I don't hate all gay people. I just blah, 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 which is a huge dog whistle. This is the kind of content that's being put out on Eric's channel in clips and in videos. This is why I could not, like I, if I spent time exclusively calling out this stuff, I could have videos out every two or three days between Eric and Az and, and other channels we're gonna look at. I could spend a lot of time calling them out, but YouTube is filled to the brim with this kind of stuff, this absolute pond scum, bottom of the barrel, we, we hate gay people and here is why types of videos. YouTube is full of them. And it would be a full-time job for me. I'd have to quit everything I'm doing just to, to cover this stuff because it is so prevalent. Over 40% of someone's content on their channel tells me that there's something deeper there than just them having an opinion about gay people. There's something else going on. They're either homophobic, they've got some other shit going on in their life that they don't want to talk about, there's some sort of underlying issues with the guys that are doing it. There's something weird about it that over 40% of the content you've made in 30 days on your channel is exclusively hate content towards gay people. That's a little fucking sus and weird. But I digress. So I don't believe in this gaslighting that it's not happening. I know it's happening. I've been keeping up with it. And this is just one of many videos where I'm going to go through and I'm going to keep an eye on channels and the percentage of content they're making that is anti-gay. I don't know when the next one's going to come out because I have to do it over 30 days time. So we'll address it when we can address it. But um, stop telling me and other people that we're overreacting. 40 plus percent of someone's video output on a channel that isn't supposed to be exclusively anti-queer that is supposed to be about comics and movies and video games and all this other stuff. You spend a lot of your time like pushing narratives against queer people. Stop telling us that there's uh there's nothing wrong because clearly there is.